symmetrical fault analysis using Demenin's theorem. Problem number 5. The circuit shows a part of power system where the rest of the system at two points of coupling have been represented by the Thevenin equivalent circuit or by a voltage source of 1 per unit together its fault level which corresponds to the per unit value of the effective Thevenin impedance. With circuit breaker 1 and circuit breaker 2 open, short circuit capacities are SEC at bus 1 that is 8 per unit and we know that the short circuit capacity is equal to 1 divided by short circuit capacity. Therefore, the per unit value of impedance at generator 1 that will be equal to 1 divided by the short circuit capacity 8. So, 1 by 8 equal to 0 0.125 per unit and the short circuit capacity at bus 2 is 5 per unit which gives ZG2 the impedance at generator 2 is 1 by 5 that is 0 0.20 per unit. Each of the line are given to have a per unit impedance of 0 0.3. So that is Z1 equal to Z2 that is equal to 0.3 per unit. The figure shows a generating station feeding a 132 kV system determine the total fault current, fault level and fault current supplied by each alternator for a three phase fault at the receiving end bus. The line is 200 km long. Take a base of 100 MVA, 11 kV for LV side and 132 kV for HT side. So this is a simplified diagram which is given in the problem. It is a 3 bus system. So bus 1, bus 2 and bus 3 and the fault occurs at bus 3 and bus 1 and bus 2 are the generator bus in which the fault level is given as 8 per unit and uh, for second bus fault level is given as 5 per unit and from first, uh, first bus to third bus there is a line and the line impedance is 0.3 per unit and bus 2 to 3 there is a line and the line impedance is 0.3 per unit the fault occurs at third bus. So we need to determine the fault current, fault level and fault current supplied by these two generators. Solution. So consider this diagram and uh, here for each machine the ratings are not specified and the base value is given and the per unit impedance are also specified. Using that we can draw the reactance diagram or an impedance diagram. So first we will be having a generator. So the generator impedance, generator 1 and followed by you will be having a transmission line 1 which is having an impedance of 0.3 per unit then you will be having a bus 3 point then at this end you will be having a generator 2 and the generator 2 reactance followed by you will be having a transmission line reactance ok so this is how the system is connected and at the center point that is the bus 3 the fault occurs Okay, so this reactance is the generator 1 reactance. It is given the problem. So this is 0 0.125 and this is 0 0.20 which is given in the problem and these two are the transmission line. The impedances are 0 0.3. So this is your complete impedance diagram. And now the equivalent circuit for the pre-fault condition can be represented like this including the Thevenin voltage source the and the fault impedance. And now applying Thevenin's theorem, short circuiting the voltage source and find the Thevenin voltage with Thevenin and Thevenin impedance is at Thevenin. So consider the reactance diagram, the voltage sources are uh, short circuited and we are going to determine the Thevenin impedance from this point. So I will see from this point is at Thevenin, the left hand side 0.125 and 0.3, these two impedances are in series, you can simply add and this side 0.3 and 0.2 are in series, simply add. This both answers are parallel with each other. So you can simply calculate the Z Thevenin like that. So 0.125 plus 0.3 that is 0.425 and 0.3 plus 0.2 is 0.5. So these two are in parallel now. So R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So you will be getting the Z Thevenin as 0.23 per unit. And the voltage source V Thevenin is 1 angle 0 and this is your complete Thevenin equivalent circuit. V Thevenin is 1 angle 0, Z Thevenin is 0.23. So we can determine the fault current, fault current IF equal to V Thevenin divided by Z Thevenin plus EZF and in this problem the fault impedance is not specified so you can enter 0. So 1, divide, 1 angle 0 divided by 0 0.23 that will be equal to 4.35 per unit. This is your fault current in per unit. Now we can determine the fault current in amps that is actual value of fault current. Actual value of fault current equal to per unit value of fault current into base current. And the base current can be given as MVA base into 10 power 3 divided by root 3 into KV base. So MVA base is 100 which is given in the problem into 10 power 3 divided by root 3 into the base KV 
is 132 kV at the fault location. So you will be getting 437.38 ampere and multiplying the base value with the per unit value, you will be getting the actual value of 1902.6 ampere. Step 2, determine fault level. So direct formula for fault level, fault level equal to IF per unit, fault current in per unit into the base MVA. So the base MVA is 100, you can simply multiply the fault current per unit value into base that will be equal to 435 amperes. Now step 3, determine fault current supplied by each generator. So for that we are going to apply a current division rule. Current will be equal to the total current into opposite resistance divided by sum of resistance and consider the generator side of the reactance diagram. So this is a complete reactance diagram. Here we will be having a two uh, loops and we are going to find the generator current 1 and generator current 2 which is supplied to the fault. So in order to calculate that, first we need to calculate the total current. So the base kV at the generator side is 11 kV. So we need to find the actual value of fault current um, based on the generator base kV. So in the previous step, uh, we solved and we calculated the fault current, actual value of fault current using the base kV on the fault location. And now we are going to determine the actual value of fault current based on the generator base value. So generator base value will be 11 kV. So to calculate base current, we are going to substitute 11 instead of 132. So 100 into 10 power 3 divided by root 3 into 11, you will be getting 5248.6 amps. And now you can substitute in the actual value of fault current formula that is equal to IF per unit into base value. And IF per unit is 4.35 already we determined into the new base value is 5248.6. So you will be getting 22831.4 amps. So this is your actual uh, uh, fault current when we are considering at the generator side. While applying current division rule, this is your total current. Now we can apply the current division rule. So the total current into opposite resistance divided by sum of resistance. So fault current supplied by generator 1, that will be equal to the total current into opposite resistance. So why if you are considering the generator 1, the opposite resistance is 0.5. So 0.5 divided by the sum of resistance 0.5 plus 0.425 and that will be equal to 12341.2 amps. Similarly, fault current supplied by generator 2, IG2 equal to the total current into opposite resistance. While we are considering this generator 2, the opposite resistance or opposite impedance that will be 0.425. So 0.425 divided by the total impedance 0.5 plus 0.425 that will be equal to 10490.1 amps. So this is the fault current supplied by the each generators.